It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Jason Danley with the Victory Sports Network. And sir, I've, I've seen the show that you all have been doing lately talking about NAIA football. Before we get too much further into our conversation today, let's start right there. I mean, we're, we're down to the national semifinals right now. Uh, Georgetown and Northwestern and College of Idaho and Kaiser. Let's just get your thoughts on some NAIA, fo NAIA football when we get started. Yeah, you know, it's a tremendous weekend coming up as we head into the semifinals. Two great matchups of, of really, you know, programs that you, you've got two that are, I would consider to be blue blood programs of, of the NAI with Georgetown and Northwestern going up against one another. And then kind of the, the rising uh, newer teams into the NAI with less than that, you know, 10 to 15 year history with College of Idaho and Kaiser going up against one another. So cr contrasting styles in both games. And I'm looking forward just to see how these uh, four squads that have never faced off against one another will do this upcoming weekend. Yeah, that that is pretty interesting. That uh, I understand the the matchup with College of Idaho and Kaiser. I can see how that wouldn't have come about before. But I was really a little bit surprised to look and see. No, Northwestern and Georgetown have never faced on the football field before. Yeah, that was amazing to me. I just I was you know kind of pulled up the history uh, for both programs where you know they list their all time records and I'm scrolling and I'm like, okay, do they have do they list Northwestern over under something different? I'll look under something else and then go to the other team's website and go to their all time records. Like, wow, these programs have existed in NAI football really since there was NAI football and they've never faced off with one another. Now a 14 hour time difference is obviously a big part of that, but given the history of both of these programs, making it into the NAI postseason, you would have thought, you know, sometime in 1986, they would have gone up against one another, but they haven't. So it'll be a great first meeting between the two in orange city. Well, Jason, you have the Victory Sports Network, and, and folks who may or may not be familiar with that, let's go ahead and, and bring everyone up to speed, victorysportsnetwork.com. I have seen the URL for a number of years, actually had a chance to be active with Victory Sports Network on, on a couple of my websites back when, but we're, we're doing some video right now, and I have enjoyed what you've been producing on your YouTube channel as well. Tell us a little bit about the Victory Sports Network. Yeah, so back in uh, 2002, I started up uh, then uh, what we just called NAIfootball.net. And as it began to expand to other sports, I needed a brand to bring it all together. But uh, that was essentially the Victory Sports Network, how that name came about to have something that would bring in NAIbasketball.net, NAIfootball.net, you know, NAI baseball.net so there'd be a central website you know for me to manage and then a central brand to promote but really the idea for the victory sports network came about back in uh 2000 2001 i was playing college football at dana college in blair nebraska which no longer exists but uh still got a lot of passion for my former alma mater uh but when i was playing there halfway through my junior year i'd gotten too many concussions and i couldn't play the rest of that year or my senior year so like any good small college they threw me into the sports information department to help out and uh, one of my jobs every week was to put together a game program for who we were playing that Saturday and I struggled to find information back then on teams that were in our conference trying to find a new roster trying to find updated team records things like that were just really hard to find on the internet and I told myself you know someday if somebody ever started an NAI sports or NAI football website they might be able to make a go at that well a Two years later, I was in my actual job and uh, I had the itch and I decided to get it started. And, you know, three years after I made that transition of creating those websites, it transitioned into a full time job for myself until about 2010, 2011, when, you know, I, I had some things that I decided I, I wanted to change in life and take a little different path professionally and pursued that. And that's when uh, the previous person that you had worked with, Rob Brandt, who's still very active on the website. He took over the day-to-day -day operations of the website back in 2010, 2011. I can't remember exactly. And uh, he had ran it uh, himself up until this last October. And I decided I, I wanted to jump back in because uh, things in my life had settled down. Uh, I don't know if having a a newborn six month old baby is settling down by any means because that, that has all happened as part of this too. Uh, but needless to say, you know, I, I, I'm very happy to have my foot back into NAI football. And uh, there's just a, a lot of passion that I have for this level. And uh, honestly, a lot of knowledge sitting around in this brain that's just accumulated about NAI football. And my, I think my friends were getting tired of 
me spouting NAI football facts at them when they they were had no idea what I was talking about, frankly. <laughs> so it, it's easier now to have an audience to you know broadcast that out to. Yeah, you, you have to have an outlet. There has to be an outlet in some way. So I I, I appreciate that you're back, and I enjoy uh, getting to uh, to to read what you think and and get to hear what you think as well from a video perspective. Mm -hmm. It's not just football, though. I mean, because as it says on on the Victory Sports Network, the nation's home for NAI sports, and it's not just football. I know, as a matter of fact, we mentioned just briefly but prior to coming on, a national champion was crowned last night in Sioux City in volleyball. Indiana Wesleyan completed the undefeated season and, and came away with a victory over Northwestern in five sets. Mind you, it did go the distance. I got to listen to a lot of that, that match, and I, I know you cover that as well. Yeah, Indiana Wesleyan, what a tremendous season for their volleyball program. I mean, I think any sports program that is able to run the table undefeated is uh, an awesome accomplishment when you think of the number of games and number of sets that you've got to play to stay perfect for an entire year. That's just a tremendous feat for Indiana Wesleyan. But you look at that Wildcat sports program, uh, you know, across all of their sports, men's soccer, women's soccer, volleyball, football, men's and women's basketball, they are competitive at the NAI level in, in every single one of their sports. They don't want to put a program out there that's not going to be competitive and, and put their best foot forward. So really big kudos to Indiana Wesleyan. And, and their volleyball program for running the table this year. Yeah, I have to, and, and you were talking about sports information too. Uh, props to David Kalk and, and the folks who are there in the sports information department because crossover season has extended so much <laughs> for them. They've had something going on well past the regular season and, and into basketball season as well. We're visiting now with Jason Danley from the Victory Sports Network. Uh, Jason, I, I, and I want to promote your program on Sunday night, not to take away from mine on Sunday night as well, because uh, we share some space here on YouTube. So hopefully folks can can get involved with with both of them. I think my Sunday night program is a little after yours uh, in in the evening central time. But that having been said, uh, you you talk uh, got get an opportunity and and really have some good information about the weekend gone past with with your Sunday night show. Yeah, every Sunday night at six o'clock central, seven o'clock eastern. Uh, Pat Donnelly, uh, no relation, but just sounds the same. Uh, him and I come on and we do a program on Sunday nights talking specifically about NAI football. And I wanted to do the program with a person that had a lot of NAI background as well. And Pat has had 20 years of coaching at the NAI level at the University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, his dad is the all-time winningest coach in NAI football. He was his offensive coordinator for 20 years, won two national championships. So for a guy like me that I'm a passionate football fan, but I've been out of the X's and O's of college football for you know, 15, 20 years now. And to have a guy that can go and actually watch the film in a different way than what I do, and then kind of you know put that out into the into the ethers, if you will, and, and allow people to hear more about NAI football, I, I think it's important. Important. And it goes back to the original reason why I started uh, the NAI football website in the Victory Sports Network. You know, I always felt like the athletes at the NAI level were severely underserved. They didn't get the promotion uh, that they deserved. Uh, they put in just as much time as a Division II, Division III, Division I athlete out there, uh, but there was no home for them. And that's my hope on Sunday night is to help feature some of those NAI football athletes and their accolades and how their weekends went and, and give it a little bit of a pizzazz, give you a, a little bit bit of a, a, a more meaning uh, for these games and why they're important and, and what one victory might mean over another, you know, just the, the basic sports stuff, but just doing it at the NAI level and, and creating a dialogue uh, for NAI football. Well, I appreciate that a lot. And of course the, the, the niche or niche or however you prefer to pronounce that, I guess, from whatever part of the country you, you happen to reside that we have here at Midwest Sports Net, I mean, mainly Division II and NAI. We cover a few other things, but the small college aspect of it really is is what we feel right here as well. And and it's a I think a group that doesn't get as much coverage on the whole, uh, all the way across. And so we're happy to to do our part here for the NAI side of it. And and as you look, then football season's winding down. Are are you going to continue into the spring doing some more things video wise? 
Yeah, the the idea is we'll probably back things off a little bit with the holidays coming up. Uh, everybody's schedule is going to be crazy, so we'll we'll ramp things back up in January. That's when I'll start getting into some individual coaching interviews. Those guys have a lot more time in the off season to talk about their programs and to promote their product a little bit more. So the idea would be as we transition into the postseason and into the off season. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to bring more coaches on, talk specifically about their programs, you know, maybe more about the culture of what they do or more about a, a style of play that they might uh, have at their uh, program that uh, isn't widely seen across the country. All right. I look forward to that. Should be a lot that we can learn from that and and uh, and be able to know more uh, about these NAI football programs. Jason, I wanted to ask you then, Really quickly to to wrap up some time with you today. Thank you very much for spending some time with me on on this Wednesday. Yeah, I'll, I we're going to talk our preview side of it here on Midwest Sports Net on Thursday night. So I I don't want to give away my picks just yet. I would love to hear yours, however, if 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 you're not afraid to give those away. I think I've seen them online yep. already. So uh, I I'd like to know that. If if there's anything people have learned about me. I'm not great at social media. Like I understand how it all works, but there's this, this certain like cadence that they think you should do things in and kind of lead people along to keep that audience on a little bit longer. I just throw it out right away. Like Sunday night, I had my predictions out and there, there was no suspense as to what was going to happen throughout the week. But, uh, you know, my thought on that is like, I, you know, I, I've, I've got a real job as I put it and I, I don't have time to, you know, tease people with things on my end. So I, uh, I did pick the home teams in this one. I think Northwestern playing in orange city is a huge advantage when going up against Georgetown, their defense is incredibly stout. They force turnovers. They put points on the board off turnovers, but I think that 14 hour bus ride, uh, everything that's going to go into the travel, not sleeping in your own bed. And then of course, playing a team as good as Northwestern with uh, one of the best athletes in NAI football this year, Jalen Gramstead, uh, under center or in shotgun most of the time for them, actually. But needless to say, Gramstead, one of the best players in the country. I think he'll be a difference maker in that game. You go over to Kaiser, and here's two very contrasting styles of offense going up against one another. You know, their College of Idaho's offense is going to spread things out. They're going to run a little RPO. They're their quarterback's going to be mobile. He's their leading rusher on their team. Uh, he's going to sling the ball all over the field. In Kaiser, they've got a tremendous backfield. They're a physical football team up front on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. Uh, they're going to run the ball at College of Idaho, mix in some play action. But really, running is the name of the game with Kaiser. So that's a little tougher game for me to pick. I do go with the home team, Kaiser, in this one, just because that home field advantage is so critical in the postseason. But that's the game that kind of has me tilt my head a little bit and, and wanting to watch that game closely because I think if College Idaho gets off the plane, is ready to play, we're going to have a heck of a ball game uh, down in West Palm Beach, Florida. It should be a lot of fun, and I look forward to uh, not only getting to preview it and talk about it a little bit more, but then to talk about them after the fact as we head toward the national championship. Jason Danley from the Victory Sports Network. Really quickly, where do they find you? Pretty easy, victorysportsnetwork.com. Uh, if you Google that, it's going to come up. If you type it in, it's going to come in. And uh, We're on Twitter and all the other places, but yeah, Victory Sports Network is uh, the name you need to know to find all of our coverage. All right. Thank you, sir, for taking time with us today. We will follow along, and, and I, I know we'll cross path to, paths again. But uh, success to you all, and we'll keep on watching. And, and by the way, just to uh, make sure that uh, I get it right, our Sunday night shows at 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Yep. So I know we're not – unless you go long, which is fine. That's all right. <laughs> I'm, I may watch a little bit long, but, uh, uh, but I, I've enjoyed watching it. So thank you for being with us today. Well, and I appreciate what you do definitely for NAI sports in general and everything in your region. I, I don't think that, that there's ever can be too much coverage of NAI athletics. So I always welcome more people, you know, like yourself, myself, and some of the other people out there nationally that are covering NAI athletics. It's all good. It's fantastic to have this level promoted and uh, certainly appreciate what, what you've been able to do through the years, uh, you know, with your website and your show. And heck, you know, if people are fans of yours and they don't want to watch two shows on Sunday nights, ours is archived on youtube check it out later on in the week uh, I, i'm not one of those guys where i feel like oh you gotta watch live like that's why i do it on sunday night so everybody's got all week to watch it and the information's still fairly accurate now, I, don't, I don't think it's a pie i think it's a river i think there's enough information that uh, we don't we don't have to to just take away our pieces of pie there's enough to go around so 
um, I'm happy to promote uh, what you're doing, and, and I appreciate it. But God bless you. Thank you very much, and thank you all for watching today. Have a great day.